There's nothing worse than buying a new bike that doesn't fit. Hi, I am retired professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, TJ Tollickson. And in front of me is a top secret new diamond prototype frame called the Icon. You're only getting that sneak peek because you're watching this YouTube channel, so thanks for that. Uh, but today we are going to talk about the four big elements to bike fit. This is maybe the first in several series. If you want to see more on bike fit, I'm going to dive into that and we can actually have some really cool guests on this channel. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to talk about the basics of bike fit. I think I'm excited. But the four biggest things, I'm going to start with one that I think is one of the most important things because uh, if you get this wrong, the rest of this all changes. And so the first thing that we're going to look at is your crank arm length. So your crank arm length, if you just look at this bike right here, is the length of this from the center here to the center of the pedal spindle. And the standard length, 172.5 millimeters. I don't know who came up with that. I don't know why that's a standard. But yes, I've ridden 172.5 cranks for most of my life because they said, well, you're close enough to that, you should probably run those cranks. A giant trend in triathlon is to run shorter cranks uh, and it has many advantages. One being that it can open up your hip angle more so you're not as tight right here between when you're leaning over, your thigh's not as tight to your chest. Uh, so that can be beneficial. I have had three hip surgeries. Three. Three? Uh, for torn labrums, and those are all created from that tight impingement in the arrow position. Uh, so shorter crank arms can help alleviate some of that. They can also help alleviate some of your knee pain as well. Uh, and the reason for that is as you're riding, and I'm just gonna hop on here so you can see. As you're riding, uh, a shorter crank arm like this means that when you're at the top of your pedal stroke, your knee is here instead of here. On a longer crank arm, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be even closer to your elbows, right? Uh, so that's a giant benefit of a shorter crank is having more clearance in there. So today we're just gonna talk about the importance of a crank arm and possibly having shorter crank arms. Yes, Andy <laughs> Steve. No, nothing. We've got uh, short crank arms, so we need to know how short should we go? Well, I don't recommend anyone ever jumps more than five millimeters at a time because that is a pretty big jump. And you have to remember that when you go to shorter crank arms, you actually need to raise your saddle height, which brings us to point number two in the bike fit is your saddle height. So saddle height is the next most important thing. Uh, and I will say this, yes, you are probably riding with your saddle too high. Why do I say that? Because when I go and watch a race, I see most people are riding with too high of a saddle. And I know you could say your bike fitter put you in there, or this is more comfortable, or you like this or that or whatever, or you watched a video online that said you should put your saddle as high as possible so you can barely reach the pedals. Um, I don't really care, I'm just saying that it's probably too high. When you go to a shorter crank arm, your saddle height might actually be right. No. So if you have your saddle height totally dialed in with your bike fit and you go to a shorter crank arm, you're gonna to need to raise your saddle the same corresponding number of millimeters. And the reason for that is if this pedal is all the way at the bottom, the furthest away from here in a straight line, we'll say that, like one straight line, all the way down. And the crank arm is five millimeters less. That means to get the same saddle height, we're gonna to have to raise this five millimeters. So that's really important that we get that right. Don't forget it. Uh, so once your saddle height is dialed in, then you also need to pay attention to the fore aft position relative to the bottom bracket. So if I was to drop a plumb line right here, boop, uh, there would be an imaginary line right here and this would be so many millimeters behind the bottom bracket, okay? So maybe this is like, I don't know, we'll say 20 millimeters behind the bottom bracket. Uh, but if I wanted to slide it all the way forward, be more aggressive, uh, I could actually come in front of the bottom bracket and you can do that five centimeters, right? So uh, it's a nice thing about the diamonds, they have a huge amount of adjustment in the seat post as well as on the saddle rails. Uh, so once you have those two things dialed in, then we can look at the rest of that, okay? And I say two, but I really talked about three things, right? So one, your crank arm length, two, your saddle height, and the three thing is your saddle fore aft relative to the bottom bracket. So once we have those things dialed in, then the big thing is in your arrow position, 
you want to pay attention to your pad reach and your pad stack. So your pad reach is the distance from the center of the bottom bracket. This is a horizontal distance from the center of the bottom bracket to the center or back of the pads, depending on how you're measuring it, okay? Um, a lot of people like to go to back of pads. Uh, it can be somewhat confusing though because uh, we have all these different pads now. Um, so we tend to kind of use the back of the pads now because even on the scoops you can get an adjustment. But you want to make sure that you're using the pads that you're going to use on your bike when you take that measurement so you know how to set up your bike every time. I'm sure it will come in handy. Uh, but if you're using this and you're measuring from the back of the pad, um, it's just a straight horizontal measurement okay so you're not taking into account any angles up or down or any of this you're just saying how far forward do my pads need to be and i'll hop on the bike again here so you can kind of see what i'm talking about so as i hop in and i get in my aero bars and when we look for a really good angle and as far as reach we want your ear to roughly be above the crease in your elbow so megan live studio audience how am i looking right now good Approved. So we could extend that, right? We could come all the way out here, put the pads further forward, okay? And what that's gonna do is put that crease in my elbow further forward, or we could be all the way back here, okay? Cause you see some people that ride like this too. Um, and so that way your elbow crease is gonna be far behind uh, your ear as well. So the neutral position is again, we like to see that so the ear lines up with the crease in the elbows. Uh, and the other big thing, that I like to make sure we do is have a little bit of tilt in here. And what that allows you to do is get those elbows closer together because I will tell you that generally the rule is the closer your elbows are together, the more aerodynamic are. I realize that this may be the most comfortable out here in terms of stability and steering and whatnot, but it's probably not the most aerodynamic position. So you wanna be aware of that uh, when you're doing your bike fit because there are two things that come into play for every triathlete. One. You need to optimize your comfort, especially for an Ironman, if you're gonna spend a huge amount of time in there. But two, you're also trying to optimize your aerodynamics. Now, the best fitters in the world will help take both of these into account and they will have a good understanding of what things make you more aero and what things do not. And so I will talk about shorter crank arms as one of those things. Some people think that the shorter crank arms make you more aerodynamic. I can tell you from my experience that they usually make you less aerodynamic. It's just how you can compensate to achieve that aerodynamics back. And it can be done because we've looked at it and tested it in the wind tunnel. You just have to be aware. So if I'm gonna raise my saddle, then I'm probably also going to want to extend my pad reach out to compensate for that so that I can achieve as aggressive of an arrow position. I realize that if you're an age grouper and you're saying speed is my second priority, comfort is my first, I will always tell you that whatever position you're in that allows you to stay in the arrow bars the longest is the best. Riding like this for hours upon hours, not in your aero bars, is the worst thing you can do in an Ironman. That bad, huh? Okay, so now we talked about the pad reach. The next thing is the pad stack. Okay, so the pad stack is simply the distance from the bottom bracket. So if we had an imaginary line from the bottom bracket and I went here, whoo, cut a laser right through there, and we went vertical straight up to the center of the pads right here. That would be our pad stack. And there's lots of ways, on a diamond, there's lots of ways we can adjust that pad stack. So we have spacers underneath the stem right here, and then we have spacers that go underneath the pads right here. So we've got a max of 40 millimeters, which shown right here, 40 millimeters of stack under the stem, and then there's a max of 65 millimeters under the pads, okay? So that's a total of 105 millimeters, which is 10.5 centimeters that you can adjust up and down on these pads. Okay, simple enough. So we talked about how a shorter crank arm opens your hips. Now let's talk about how having a higher stack does the same thing by opening your hips. So as I hop on the bike again, you can see that if my elbows were here, versus say my elbows were all the way down here, you could see how tight my hip angle is in this position, right? And then you can see how my hip angle opens up as I get higher. So these are important things to consider. Consider the phone. 
you may not need a shorter crank arm to open your hips more. You could just need to raise your stack. So these are the five most important things, uh, really four plus two on the saddle, right? That are really important when you're determining uh, your bike fit. Okay, so you cannot manipulate any one of these without making adjustments in any other area, which is why I always, always, always recommend people do a bike fit on a fit bike before they do one on their actual bike. And the reason for that is it's suboptimal to take a bike that you've already purchased that may or may not be the right size bike for you and then try to make it fit your body. The best thing to do is to get on a fit bike if you don't know what a fit bike is, we just showed you a video of that. So you can see what a fit bike is. My favorite is the Guru fit bike because it actually moves X, Y coordinates. But when you're on a fit bike, uh, you're not limited by five millimeter increments or 10 millimeter increments. And you can do it much faster because it's in real time moving a millimeter at a time or fractions of a millimeter at a time. Uh, if you want to know my recommendations on fitters, we'll save that for another day, but I've got some great thoughts on fitters. Uh, not every fitter is the same. Uh, some are much better than others, just like triathletes. But uh, these are my ideals for bike fit. I hope you learned something. If you want to see something more specific, leave a comment for me and I will dive into this topic in more depth. Join the thousands now, thousands of athletes who watch these videos and learn something with a little bit of humor every week. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more of it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I've got all kinds of great Ironman tips on training, nutrition, racing, amazing content. I would love for you to join me on this journey. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Check it out every week.